So as we celebrate the season of Advent, it's a season of expectation, of longing, of waiting, of hoping, of looking forward to the, the coming of our Messiah, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so I want to encourage you throughout the whole month, don't wait to celebrate Jesus coming until Christmas Day or Christmas Eve, but take this whole time and as you come to church, prepare your heart for that gift that, that God's already given to us in Jesus and, and look for him in different places throughout the season. Uh, as I've told you before, I've got a number of manger scenes in our house. They just stay up all year and uh, not as many as Glenn and Christina Price have. They've got a whole house full, I think, but we've got several and they, we just have some that are our favorite that, that we just leave up. And then we've also got a number of, of, of angels that we have in different places. And uh, just remem remembering uh, that, that message that Jesus came was, was coming and proclaiming to us in different places and ways. So look for God throughout this season, uh, and I believe he'll show up. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the message that uh, you have for us this morning, whether it ends up being the one that I'm preaching or not. I just uh, I pray our, our minds would be open to think about you and to hear things that you might have for us, that our hearts might be open, that we might feel things you want us to feel and uh, to reflect on them and, and share them with others. But also, I believe you have things for us to act upon and you want us to go out and make a difference in this world. So I pray that your word would go forth. And uh, God, that uh, you would help make some sense of this message that's to be delivered. And I know that we'll all get different things out of what we hear today. But Lord, most importantly, may we get out of it what you want us to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Our New Testament reading comes this morning from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verses 8 through 11. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work as it is written. They have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will also supply and increase your store of seeds and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way so that you can be generous on every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in giving thanksgiving to God. Friends, these are God's good words and may he add his blessings upon them. So sometimes I repeat things because, well, I just don't know that I repeat them, and I'm getting older, and, and I just, uh, you know, and, and my, my family or you will say, oh yeah, you've already told us that. But then there are other things I repeat because they bear repeating. There's sometimes we need to repeat things, and we want to make sure people have heard them, or maybe they hear something different about it, or there's a different way of looking at it, and we want to make sure uh, we feel like it's important enough that the message is shared again so that somebody hears this. And this is uh, part of a sermon that I heard when I was 22 years old, and I mentioned it uh, a time or two, or four or five. It, it was from a sermon that my pastor preached. It was called, Blessed to be a Blessing. And I can't remember all of that sermon, but just that title itself right there has become a filter uh, in many ways for my entire ministry in my life. Uh, because I, I, I was just convinced in those moments that I wasn't here just for me. This whole world is not about me. It's about God, and God has things for us to do, and people to bless. And so I think so many of my sermons, there's, if you go back, if I listen to them or, or think about them, that, that message seeps through in so many different places. And so this morning, I want to share a little bit more about this because after I mentioned it a few weeks ago, just the bless to be a blessing theme, uh, one of our church families began to have a conversation with each other, which I love. I love when people come to me at the end of a sermon or end of a week and go, you know, that really made me think. Uh, that it, I, I love it when people feel things, but I also love when something is said that makes somebody go, hmm, I'll have to think about that a little bit. And they had some discussion on what it meant for God to bless us, 
us to bless others, but also they had this real question and, and sort of a, a dilemma about how do we bless God, a, a, a God who has everything? Does God need to be blessed? And we'll talk about that a little bit this morning in the message because God, I think, really does deserve our blessings. And I want to share just a little bit what, how I think that uh, scriptures speak to us about that. But from Genesis chapter 12, which is a part of a scripture that I, I've used quite a few times, I used it a few weeks ago, uh, it starts off, it says, Now the Lord said to Abram, who would later become Abraham, his name would be changed as he followed God, God said to him, Go from your country. So it starts off saying, From where you are, I want you to move. And I know most of us, many of us, most of us don't like change a whole lot. Anybody in here, Michelle's already smiling. Is there anybody in here that's not a real big fan of change? Shh, raise your hand. All right, now raise your other hand. Now, see, now you, some of you said, No, I don't like that. You're changing things up on me already. And so uh, change, but I was reading something this week that said, Almost any good thing that's happened into our lives, you can maybe say some of the bad things as well, has come because of a result of some sort of change in our lives. And so change, God uses change to bring about good things in our lives. And so God said to Abram, this is the start of our relationship. I want you to leave your comfort zone. I want you to go from your, your family and your country and to a land that I'm going to show you. He didn't give him the map all, all at once. He didn't give him the, the coordinates for ways that said, all right, I'm going to put it in here and you just keep following it. He said, I'm going to give you a place to go, but you're going to have to follow me and trust me along the way. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you and make your name great. So as you read the beginning of the Old Testament, it, we're hearing that God says, I'm, if you'll follow me, I'm going to bless you and make your name great. And if you stopped right there, that would be a, a wonderful story and message that, hey, God blesses me, and he, want, he wants to love me. But this next little part of this sentence is why I always say you need to read things in context and in the, the larger part of it, it says, so that. There's so many so that's in Scripture. God asks us to do something so that he can do something else. And here, God speaks to Abram and said, if you'll follow me, I will bless you, make you a great nation, so that you will be a blessing. His ultimate plan was not just to bless Abraham, but he was blessing Abraham so that he would be a blessing to others. And I have found over and over again, when we're willing to be a blessing to other people, it's how God has created us. Sometimes I, I, we say these things like, well, it's just the way I am, or it's just the way I was created. It's the way God has created each and every one of us to be a blessing to other people. And when we discover that, we find great joy in, in not just trying to hold on to things that rust and break, become outdated, that need updates or just need to be thrown away. And, uh, you know, God, God wants us to have something that's so much more meaningful, and that's a relationship with him. And so as this Advent season, we also remember that Jesus, from the Greek form of his name, which was Joshua, means the Lord saves. Jesus, we look at the, throughout this month, Advent season, a, a month where we receive the blessings of God, joy, peace, meaning, purpose. But we also, in following Jesus, we find the blessing of being in relationship with other people, of making friends and family. And as I, as I mentioned to the Smith family today, I said, you know, when you join our church, you're not just, you're not just joining an organization, you're, you're joining a, a church family. And, and we're here to pray for each other and encourage one another and building each other up. Now, families, you know, you've been together with your families over this last couple of days, and if you get off on the wrong topic or, you know, something, you can have a little friction there. That's part of being a part of a family, and that's okay. But, but being a part of family comes with so many blessings as well, and I hope at this season we make sure that we treasure that and do what we can to, to build upon that. When we think about being blessed to be a blessing, let's start with what God has blessed us with. I hope over this Thanksgiving season you've taken some days to just reflect and count your blessings. Um, I, I, you know, I, I like to talk about, I love 
turkey sandwiches. I love all the food, all the things there. But God has blessed me with so much more than that. He's blessed me with my family, my, my wife, my children. Uh, he, he's brought a new, a new addition to our family, and so we're excited about that as well. Uh, but God has brought me in as a, someone who grew up without a real family. He, he's given me you. I'm sorry, he's given you me. Uh, sometimes but but God is one who who loves us enough to put us in community and when we become isolated and we pull away from from the church and from God's family we really do miss out because God has some real treasures here for us to find in one another but as as we looked at the the kind of blessings that Jesus gives again eternal life life here on earth is is the Lord's Prayer that we pray is, Lord, we pray for God, your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. It's not just about a destination. It's also about God's kingdom taking place here in this here and now. The question became from my, my friends and church members that we were talk, they were talking. They said, if God blesses us with these gifts, again, what does it mean for us to bless God? God doesn't need anything. But he did need enough to create us. He wanted us to be, as one song says, he didn't want heaven without us. And that he created us to be in communion and relationship with him. Sometimes words can take on different meaning depending the context that you're using. And when God blesses us, he gives us so much. I, I could sit down and count my blessings probably a good part of a day and just, just not even begin to touch, touch all those. But when, when we bless God, one of our blessings is what we've been doing this morning. We praise him. We acknowledge his goodness. We lift him up and tell others about who God is. There's so many misconceptions about God and different views on God, an angry, judgmental God who's out to get us. That's not the God I worship, not the God I serve. The God I, I worship and serve is one who loves us, who came to be with us, but also sends us to be with those who are hurting and in need. Uh, perhaps you've heard of the name, maybe not John Piper. He's a well-known uh, pastor, speaker, and uh, he, he's, he wrote this. It says, my thesis is that in Scripture, when God blesses men, they are hereby helped and strengthened and made better off than they were before. God blesses us with spiritual, emotional, sometimes material things. But when men and women bless God, he's not strengthened or helped but, or made better off. He said, but rather man's blessing God is an expression of praising and thankfulness and what a better time here at thanksgiving to stop and reflect on all the blessings god has given us and that we in turn bless god with our praise and with our hearts when the old testament speaks of blessing god it does not designate a process that process that aims at strengthening and increasing god's strength but rather it is an exclamation of gratitude and exclamation and admiration it's an exclamation of gratitude and admiration, and that's what we've been doing this morning. So the scriptures, they, have, they talk about blessing God quite a bit. They really do. Psalm 100, point, number 4, verse 4, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise is what we've been doing today. Give him thanks, bless his name. All your works shall give you thanks to you, O Lord, and all your saints shall bless you. Psalm 145, 10. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, Psalm 103, verse 2, and verse, uh, Psalm 104, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty. And I'm not sure which direction it starts from, but I, I do know that God blessed us first. And sometimes in, in thinking, thinking about him and thanking him for all those things, my heart is turned towards those in need and those who can, can receive encouragement and love and hope and that God gets me out of what's in it for me. How, how am I going to help this person and what's it going to do for me? So many times that just ends to disappointment. When we love somebody else because we just love them or they have a need, then, then we start to feel maybe closer to God, maybe like 
we have more purpose throughout this Advent season, as I've already seen. I love the pictures of the kids. We got the, the little kids. Jesus gathered them, said they were important. But, but the shepherds who were out in the field and in many ways worthless to other people were, worth, were just a great part of the Christmas story. The women who, who back in that day were not valued at all and, and not appreciated, Jesus kept bringing them out. God kept putting them in the limelight and using them for his glory. And he used people who were hurt and broken. God is a kind of God who brings all those people from the fringes on the outside who feel lost and he allows us all to become something meaningful in the kingdom of God. Now, I went to seminary and got training to be a pastor. And so some people would say, well, he, you know, he, he knows what he's doing. Some of you would go, eh, I'm still not so sure. But anyway, but you know what, what really makes me able to stand up here is that God called me. He called me to leave Portsmouth, Virginia and, and to follow him and to, to be willing. And it took a long journey of following. And, and then God said, I want you to go from Charlotte. It's time to go to seminary. And I followed him to Decatur, Georgia. As I, as I shared, you know, God picked a pastor who, so that when he went to Columbia Seminary, my pastor took me, so we're going to the seminary and I want you to come with me. Columbia Seminary, we started driving through South Carolina, I kept going through South Carolina, and he said, we're going to stop at the varsity and get some burgers when we get to Atlanta. I went, Dave, I, I don't understand. I, I, I'd only been out of Virginia for a little while. I said, but I, but I believe that Columbia, South Carolina is right over here. He said, oh no, we're not going to Columbia, South Carolina. We're going to Columbia Seminary in Decatur, Georgia, which is way down there. Uh, God decided to use me anyway even though I was geographically challenged and he decides to use you as well and he will not because you get some big degree or you've studied under somebody or all these things those are important it's good to be prepared but God will use you wherever you are to accomplish his purpose if you'll make yourself available availability is what God really wants as much as anything from us so we praise God and we thank him for all that he's done and I hope that uh, you've been doing that as we receive food and shelter kindness from others throughout our lives um, and and this this morning as we just come out of this Thanksgiving weekend um, it's a great time to think about church family our families here with us today the ones that blessed us as we were growing up that may not be here with us anymore to give thanks and just to worship God but this morning I want to just kind of move forward and and look at the importance of being blessed to bless others in 2nd Corinthians chapter 8 and 9 Paul discusses the Christian duty to provide financial support emotional support help for those Christians in Jerusalem who were poor and in need, we're facing economic hardship and, and relational hardship uh, because of a famine that had occurred in that area during that season in the first, uh, first century. And, and, and history, historians believe that Paul spent close to 10 years helping uh, raise money for these Christians that were in trouble. And the, and the first Corinthian church was one of the first churches to participate in that. And so as I reflected on that this week, of course I was blessed and remembered. Humphrey, there he is again. So this is Humphrey's last Sunday with us before he goes home. He'll be back in a couple of years, I'm sure. And then he'll go to the beach again before I get there, but that's okay. So uh, Humphrey, we've loved having you here. It really has been here. But God, is, as I, I think about Humphrey and I think about the food pantry and I think about salvation scars and as I think about the connecting threads, I'm, and I always, always take a risk at leaving somebody else but out. And, and um, I, all of those, the people that are doing the Christmas, the Christmas gifts, when Humphrey came, he, he didn't have the resources to do what he ended up doing. But God provided the resources and continues to reach out to hundreds and hundreds of children in that region. Our food pantry, we sometimes we, uh, over the years, we've kind of got, it's, the cupboards have been close to a little bare. 
And then people find out about it and somebody posts something somewhere and all of a sudden all these gifts come in. Uh, I, I, I'm not going to tell you the amount of the, uh, the grant, but it was a, a really generous grant. Out of the blue, absolutely out of the blue, uh, we received a, a letter, Craig received a letter saying that somebody had from Paducah, Kentucky. How many of you have been to Paducah, Kentucky? Wow, that's a lot of people. I didn't know it really. That's, we've got almost as many people here that live in Paducah, Kentucky, right? And uh, I don't know. I'm sorry. If you're, how many people are from Paducah, Kentucky? Oh, bless you. I'm, you know, I, I, I think it's probably a great place. But it just sounds, it, it is. Uh, I, I won't pick, I'll pick on some other place. Uh, Alabama. No, I can't do that either. So we get this letter and Craig sits in front of me and says, somebody has, has nominated us to some foundation in Paducah, Kentucky to receive a grant, a, a, a fairly nice grant to our, our food pantry. Just, just out of, I said, who is that? I, I mean, there's, I've already apologized to him. I've apologized to the session. I've, I've apologized to God uh, because when I saw that letter, I get some really strange requests from people and uh, people trying to convince me of things to get money and help and I, so I've got to be very discerning about where and which ones I believe in and we all get those on the emails and, and places right and so I was just a lot skeptical about that and uh, Craig followed up on it and uh, it was real uh, and and so God blessed us in some of our needs that we have but in the it, him living out what we're talking about this morning he said Brian there's another food pantry that we partner with that uh, that sometimes struggles and really needs help and they've helped us before and and I think we need to use some of what we've got to help them and so we're we're looking at ways that we can do that as well we've been blessed why have we been blessed to be a blessing to others and I see uh, from all sorts of things I know Mimi could tell you stories about salvation scars that would just go on and on uh, because of all the ways that God has brought materials and people and things into her life through this church, this little church that we get right here to bless hundreds and hundreds of people. And the list goes on as, as I come in and watch the ladies, what they can do with some thread and some scraps and turn some wonderful things and connecting threads. What a blessing it is. What Paul is saying here is that if you'll follow me and if you'll be willing to be open, if God puts something on our hearts to, to go out and reach people, not just for us to, to put into a closet or to hold on for ourselves, but if, God's, if we'll open our hands and say, God, what you put in this hand, I'll put it in this hand and I'll give it to somebody else. He's looking for people, uh, whether it's part of an organization or just you individually, he will bless you and he will meet all of your needs. God is able to bless you. I love this. Not just, eh, he'll just kind of help you out. It says, and God is able to bless you abundantly. Abundantly. I'll use that deep, abundant God voice. And God is able to bless you abundantly. So that in all things, and not just sometimes, but in all things and at all times, having all that you need, he will meet our needs. You will abound in every good work. That's what God has for us to do, is to abound in other work, works. And I know that, I know so many of you out here who live that out. And I know that there are many of you who I don't know what you've been doing, uh, but God's been blessing other people through you. And, uh, and that's part of what God's called us to do. We call the gospel good news for a reason. It's good news about God's love for us, but it's also good news for God's ways of blessing other people around us. We've not been simply blessed to make our ledger greater, our, our inventory higher. Uh, it, we're, we've not been blessed just to have more possessions or accomplishments. Uh, we, we have been blessed so that we can be a blessing to others. I wrote down what might that look like in our daily lives. A word, a note of encouragement, sitting with someone and listening to them when they're hurting and, and, and needing someone to just love them. Financial help where needed. Uh, we, we hear those words uh, often, um, you're in my thoughts and prayers, and thoughts and prayers are important, they really are. 
but some people need us to be involved physically. And sometimes that can just be messy, right? You get involved and after a while you're going, oh, what, what, why did I get involved in this? But being, being Christian sometimes can be messy as well. And so God uses us and sometimes we, we mistake and we don't hear it quite right and it doesn't work out as we want. But God doesn't ask us to be a great success in everything that we do. He asks us to be faithful in reaching out and loving others along the way. So my hope for you this, this week is to reflect on the ways that you might first of all bless God, then how God has blessed you. You might decide to do that different ways. How has he blessed you, then how can you bless him? But also as this Christmas season comes along, how can you bless others? Uh, I'm, I'm working on part of the sermon. It, 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 I'm not sure what it's going to sound like, but by the time it comes, maybe Christmas Eve, we keep hearing all about this supply chain problem, right? Everything that's being, that we, we, you're not going to have a good Christmas because you're not going to get what you want because you're only going to have one choice on this one item uh, because of the supply chain problems and, and all this boats sitting out there on the left coast somewhere. But we hear from the scripture this morning and from scripture in general, but my God will supply all of your needs according to Christ Jesus. With God, there is no supply chain problem. Isn't that wonderful to, to know? And maybe God's going to use this Christmas to, to kind of put us back into a right frame of mind and attitude to help us remember that it's not about all the goodies we get under the tree. I love goodies under the tree, don't mind you. They're, they're good too. But that, that maybe our blessings are going to look a little different. And we're going to focus on Jesus maybe just a little bit more. And remember, it really is still about Jesus this Christmas and every Christmas. And let's pray, uh, Chuck, that God, God revives some of us, renews some of us, and that he uses this season with sometimes in the greatest problems, God shows up the biggest way and he does wonderful things. I, I saw this quote and I, I think it's my quote for the season for me, collect moments this season. Let's not worry about collecting stuff this season, right? As I just had a, a couple of days with uh, my family and having the opportunity to have them all together, that, that's the blessing I need. Um, and, and, and so as you are, if you don't have a family out there, remember you have this family and we want you to be a part of it. So let's collect some moments this season and even pass those along as well. We have been blessed to be a blessing. Let's pray. God, I thank you for all the blessings you brought into my life. These people, your love, my family, my friends. God, how you, you've helped me in each, each step and phase of my life when I was with empty pockets, with uh, nothing to, to uh, trade or use for collateral. You've always shown up. And I know that there are people out there who struggle to say that. Help us to be maybe the answer to their prayers if we can. Or to find some others that can help join with us to be that blessing that we need to be, to be. And God, I just pray our hearts would be open this season uh, to count our many blessings and to receive all of your love that come to us in Jesus' name. Amen.
to the light of the world. Glory to the light of the world is here. Drought breaks with the tears of a mother. A baby's cry is the sound of love. Come down, come down, Emmanuel. Oh, he is the song for the suffering. He is Messiah, the Prince of Peace has come. So this is our O Come Emmanuel Sunday, uh, and uh, and what a what a great theme to have because we uh, we are reminded that God wants us to open ourselves and wait and look and anticipate. Uh, I I know that sometimes my greatest blessings have come at the end of a long period of waiting, and uh, sometimes the waiting was not fun, but I grew and and I experienced God with me and. God blessed me uh, with his presence during that time of waiting. Um, and as the people of Israel and then the early church, and then as we continue to wait for his return, uh, in the meantime, we have the opportunity to grow closer to him. So we've got a, a, a number of prayer requests and praises. We want to continue to pray for Greg Ensminger, who had a kidney transplant and is, and is home recovering and doing pretty well. But he had about a six weeks period, I believe, that was... Uh, he was going to have to be sort of isolated and to make sure he didn't get infections. And, and so we prayed for him and his daughter, Joe Austin, who's been in the, the hospital for um, this past week, is coming home this morning. I think he maybe is home by now, and he's coming home with a little bit of help for, for Lee to help take care of him for a bit. So continue to pray for Joe and Lee and that, that, that he gets, their, gets strength. Uh, we, we were praying uh, a few weeks ago and have been praying for Guillermo Sanabia who uh, had surgery and Guillermo's back with us today. So God bless you, Guillermo. We'll keep praying for you. It's good to have you with us today. 
Um, one thing I've learned about this church is when they say they're going to pray for you, you know what? They pray for you. They really do. And they keep praying for you. So we're thankful for that. So I thought I had missed the, uh, you know, I, I, for a couple of weeks I've just been feeling bad because I, I kept forgetting to, uh, to, to make this announcement. And, uh, and what I'm reminded this morning is that, you know, sometimes our forgetting is just God's timing. So this morning, I would like to uh, introduce to us uh, a, a new addition to one of our families, little uh, Bella Francis Bauman, uh, and we have Steph Bauman, uh, who is uh, uh, Julie and Phil Grazier's daughter, married to Eric. They had a, a, new, a new baby girl on November 17th, which is Christopher, my son's birthday and our anniversary. That was so nice of you to share, to share that with us. And I share a birthday with your mom, so I just feel even more connected. I'm going to ask you, could you stand up just very, don't, don't, don't clap real loud, just give one a, just a little, uh, congratulations. See, I knew, I must have known, God knew you were coming. So this was the day for us to announce, and what a what a, a beautiful little baby. We've got to uh, want to pray for Joe Baker's sister who's got some lung uh, difficulties and just pray that they can find uh, the help she needs and uh, whether it's uh, sur surgery, medication, whatever, but just uh, pray, pray for Joe's sister. Doug Smith had surgery uh, a week or so ago on a couple of discs and he's continuing to, uh, to feel better and so we keep praying for him. It, it, he's doing, doing better. Good, doing much better. And then we want to pray for Mike Moore, who is Carolyn Frost's brother, who is in the hospital with congestive heart failure. And so let's pray for Mike as well. Uh, again, Humphrey's going to be heading home, and so we're going to pray for you, the safe travels. And is that, uh, I know it's this coming week that you're heading out? I'll be leaving tomorrow, 7 in the evening. Tomorrow at 7 in the evening. God bless you. And it's, uh, make sure, so if you missed. There was a little reception over at the Turner's house yesterday. If you missed that, make sure you give Humphrey a, a hug before he leaves. And uh, just uh, he'll be, be here for, I know, a few minutes. And it's nice to see some familiar faces I haven't seen in a while. And, and so I would say, you know, it, it, I, I thought, you know, it's Thanksgiving weekend. Maybe, maybe folks won't show up as much because they're home and, and being with family. And so many of you came and shared the beginning of this Advent season with us. And so as much as possible, I want to encourage you to, to let's build on this. Sometimes we go, okay, that was a big Sunday. Let's just drop off and go back to normal. But I want to, at this season, encourage us. We, we had to do sort of Christmas virtually last year. And I, and I hope that you're already enjoying this. And we'll continue to do more of this throughout the month. So uh, don't keep it to yourselves. Share it with your family family, your friends, people who don't have a church, a new neighbor, somebody moving in this, this, this Christmas, say, why don't you come in and join us this, this Sunday? Maybe we go out to lunch afterwards. And they may say no, and it will probably have nothing to do with you. Um, so keep asking. Uh, and then you'll ask, 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 ask. They'll say no for years, and then somebody somewhere at another time will ask them, and they'll say yeah, sure, I'll come with you. And I've always, when that's happened, I'm like, oh, I asked them first. That's not fair. And, um, but what I've learned is that there are other people that I've asked and have said yes to, and there's somebody that asked them for years, and they never came. Uh, so we're just all planting seeds and asking people to be a part of this wonderful thing that God is doing uh, for no other reason than just to love them and so I, I want to encourage you, invite people to come and be a part of what, what God is doing um, in his kingdom and here in Ackworth, Georgia. So let's pray. Dear God, I just, uh, for all of these, we thank you for especially a little baby being born during the holiday season. It reminds us how fragile and small and vulnerable Jesus was when he came into this, into this world. I pray that we might look for the vulnerable, those who are on the margins, those who are hurting, and that we might bring light into their darkness. But God, in doing so, they might bring light into ours. Pray for Joe as he's home. Help him to, to settle in and, and find uh, comfort and care as he needs it. 
pray for Joe Baker's sister and, and uh, her long situation. Lord, I pray that you would be the great physician working through many really good physicians, doctors, and nurses. Pray for Greg and Sminger and, and praise you for that kidney that he got. May it be well. For Doug's recovery and that he's doing well. For Guillermo and his family, Lord, continue to, to work out in, in that situation and, and bless him. And we lift up Mike Moore this morning and his congestive heart failure. God, we don't know what's going on exactly, but you know everything about that situation. And then each of us, we've got something going on that we could use a little help with. And so we, we lift that up as well. I praise you and thank you that our family was blessed this, this uh, weekend with some really wonderful family time. I pray uh, as Christopher and Ashley head back to Texas that you would help them have a safe trip the, along with everybody else on the road. Lord, keep them safe. Uh, God, I thank you for my daughter Jennifer who um, is right here with us in, in Ackworth and, and sometimes that uh, we can forget those things and, and take people or, or situations for granted uh, but how good it is to have her with us this morning as well and I'd be amiss if I asked for your blessings and thanks for everybody else in my family and didn't thank you for my wife I don't want to get in trouble Lord so thank you for her I'm kidding Lord oh God we come before you in a moment of silence to bless your name, to give you thanks. And God, if you desire to speak to us, to hear from you, Lord, we come. God, there are things that we've intended to do for your glory and goodness, and somehow we've not done them. Forgive us. There are things that we've done that um, we're not proud of. And God, we sometimes hide them like you don't know, but you do. Forgive us. God, sometimes we are, we are reluctant to approach you because we, we fear you in the sense of not just respect, but just fear and God I don't believe you want us to just be afraid of you you want us to draw near and as Paul said to be able to call you Abba Father and to know that we are your children in Christ Jesus so God I, I pray this morning that we would continue to open ourselves up to your blessings and God the world is a mess and we're part of that mess sometimes part of the problem but while we can Help us to be a part of the solution as, as well. Not clinging to religion or institutions or buildings, but clinging to your son Jesus and your love for us. We come praying that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, as we leave this morning, just be reminded that the offering plates are out back and that you can give there in the office. We have a, a slot in the doorway over there and online and however we can help you but thank you for your faithfulness in, in allowing us to to do all this that we do through your gifts and and uh, the, the, what you do to support us I once had a friend who came here for a while and and he said Brian how how uh, how in the world does the church pay for all this this didn't make sense it wasn't adding up and I said well what do you mean he said 
well, I know you're not getting, I, I know you're not paying all the bills by what I'm putting in the offering plate. He said, I don't know how, I don't know how that's happening. I said, well, I really don't either because I don't ever look. I don't know. Uh, but you're, out of your generosity, God continues to be a blessing to this church generation after generation. And he prompts you because, as you know, we don't have stewardship seasons and I don't put a lot of pressure on you. And, you know, we pray. God blesses us through you, so thank you. And uh, as you go, I, again, I like I like having the offering plates. I know I, it was wonderful here and pass them all, but there's something to be said for having them out there because we're reminded that as we go, as Paul said, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, a living offering. So as you leave today, you're called to be an offering to God by your words by your gifts, by your time, you name it, you think about it, God will use you if you're willing. May God bless you and keep you, it's been wonderful to be with you today, as I love to say and, and remind people, God loves you and so do I, may he bless you and make his face to shine upon you, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, be with you and abide with you both now and forevermore. God bless you, go in peace and joy. Tears of a mom.